first grade and uh, class of 2025 and I go to Valparaiso High School. Uh, I started playing when I was like, I'd probably say when I was young, like one. Um, my first word was actually ball and I'd always like dribble a ball and I'd always shoot it and there's videos of me shooting when I was one, two years old, so I started when I was young. Nice shot, birthday boy. Yeah, three in a row. My dad kind of like just gave me a ball and I just kind of fell in love with it, but then as I got older, I mean, I just started watching basketball and the person who probably like gave me dreams was probably Steph Curry. Like I just, I was watching him when I was young and I kind of wanted to be like him. Left hand crossovers, fades and fires. Oh my goodness! Curry with another three! You know what time it is. The closer. Check the clock. Monster steal. Curry with another three. 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 Like you put on your jersey, like who are you playing for? Definitely my parents. Uh, definitely my parents. Uh, my dad's a big factor. Uh, he's always there for me. He's always pushing me. He's always um, like even when I don't want to get in the gym, he's always pushing me to go get in the gym, go get in the gym, go get in the gym because that's just what he knows. And he, like he's taught me hard work. And my mom, she's the, the biggest supporter. Like I couldn't ask for a better mom. And she's. Constantly cheering me on, constantly like reassuring me, constantly just being there for me, and like my parents are like the main reason why like this is what I do. Uh, my name is KJ Avery. I was originally born in Africa, and then moved out to to here, and when I was like three, to live with my new adopted family, class of 2026, and go to Valparaiso. Well, when I was like in first or second grade, I was playing with this courts team, mm -hmm. and then one of our season, Jack came and like joined us, and he was cooking everybody. We were just, it was excited to watch him, and also like, who, like who is this guy? Yeah. And we became friends. I don't know, we became better friends after that. It teaches me a lot, like the stuff you have to do, the stuff you have to go through to actually become like well known, becoming a three star right now I think. And just it's, it's crazy. A sophomore year. Right now I'm just trying to beat his free throw record. <laughs> which I haven't been to the line that much this lately, so I can't really do that. But as a team right now, just tune on everybody. Mm -hmm. When we play bad, play good. Like anything we do, just keep cheering on everybody. What time do you have class? My first class is 7.35. But I got uh, lifting. Lifting? Mm hmm APC. So it's not with the basketball team, it's just like? Uh, it's just like kids can take it for like school and stuff. It's definitely hard, like 
you have to really work hard to be able to even get on a team and plan on them against those four or five stars. Like, you gotta be ready to play every single game and you gotta like step on that court like having something to prove because you're like, I'm not a five star, like, but I'm going against these four or five stars. I'm going against seven footers. Like, mm -hmm. you gotta just step on the court and be a dog and have something to prove every time you play against those type of big names. who believes in me, I got teammates who believe in me and like we're all we all stick together and we all know our role and um, having them there for me is just like like I can't do it on my own obviously mm -hmm. so uh, I definitely want to win a sectional. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't won a sectional yet but I definitely want to win a sectional and then uh, to end out my high school career I want to beat the Valpo all time leading scorer. Mm -hmm.
start like getting those offers um like how's that recruitment experience been for you like is it still slow like right now or uh it's definitely starting to heat up after yeah. these first games yeah i'm going on a visit to indiana state january 3rd okay. but i def i have a lot of coaches texting me calling me and showing a lot of interest in me like at any school when i was growing up i definitely wanted to go to duke mm -hmm. i mean watching coach k and players that came out of there, Zion, Jason Tatum, like all those guys, a blue blood school, like I've always wanted to play at Cameron Indoor, but yeah, that's just been my dream school growing up mm -hmm. at Duke. Duke. Yeah. So he'll scream so you don't have to feel embarrassed. Alright. So you can scream. Say so like fake scream? Yeah, but Sorry. like it'll be more natural if you have to But he'll scream too. Yeah. Like you're not screaming. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll type of scream. Do I just slap the ball and scream? Yeah. Alright. Ah! Alright, one more. That was good. That was good. Ah! <laughs> Perfect. Perfect.
coming out, obviously they came out in a face guard box of one. So I just knew distributing the ball, getting my teammates open, then knocking down shots. Uh, that opened me up in the second half, and that's what allowed me to get going and get hot a little bit. So uh, just them making shots kind of what opened my game up in the second half. Yeah, I've been playing with them since I was in middle school, sixth grade, maybe elementary school, fifth grade. And, uh, you know, when they got that tech at the end, we were both uh, we were both drawn a little bit. And the ref couldn't see me. He was behind me. And he just saw my friend Michael. He was just drawn at me. And uh, he, didn't really, he didn't really say things refs wanted to hear, I guess. And... He didn't know that we've been friends for a while, so we were kind of like joking a little bit. And he just teed him up, and he was he was so confused. So, I mean, I'll take it. A win is a win, but um, yeah, obviously he didn't know that we've been friends for so long. So my name's Ben Liskey. I'm from Valpo. I'm born and raised, went to Valparaiso University. Uh, this is uh, my 18th year coaching at Valpo High School, my first year as a head coach. I teach psychology, um, is my other uh, part of my job, other than coaching, as well as I'm an instructional coach, so I kind of help out um, with some of our professional development and other things around the school. Times I started thinking about being a, a basketball coach is in middle school with Steve Osborne, who's kind of a legend in uh, the Valpo community if you've ever played basketball. And that's when I really started to think maybe coaching would be something I want to do. I always had a lot of great teachers, and so I've, and I've always loved learning. And so that's one thing that I thought I'd want to do. Um, <clears throat> had great coaches here at Valpo High School, um, John Knopf, uh, um, Lou Reinhardt, Bob Punter, Bob Barthold, all those guys. But uh, Homer Drew, too, is another inspiration and getting to work with him. Um, you know, it teaches you how to live your values. And then I got to work under another bunch of great coaches here. So uh, Joe Otis, Matt Thomas, Chris Benedicts, uh, Bear Kuhlman, like these are all guys who helped shape me into the basketball coach that I am today. I think about my favorite coaches that I ever had and the things that they used to do and the coaches that I've worked for and I, I try to draw inspiration from them too. So, you know, you, you look for material anywhere and everywhere. I, I look for, for inspiration from my players often as well. Like, you know, you watch somebody go dive on the floor and like that's, that's the inspiration right there. You don't need anything from me, your teammates doing it. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I, I think one of the biggest things because he's a hoop junkie, um, like he's, his, We've got Huddle is what we, we watch our film and whatnot. And uh, he's competing with a lot of the coaching staff often uh, with how many hours and minutes he's putting into it. And if he's not watching high school basketball, he's watching college and professional. And I think that's one of the reasons why his IQ is so high um, because he's, he's constantly studying the game. Um, when we talk through stuff, I actually one of the cool, this is one of the really fun parts about being a coach is when like your players start to learn stuff and apply it. Uh, and it's really cool when a team's starting to defend our ball screens or other stuff certain ways and he's got the idea or the solution already when we come when he comes off the floor. Uh, we had a big moment with that just uh, uh, j just la our last game where he's like, this is what we're gonna do, just like we talked about on Thursday. And you're like, you're absolutely right. That's why we call it timeout. Um, and so it's, that's pretty cool. Uh, he puts a ton of work in, um, not just on the mental side, but on the physical side. Uh, one of the biggest transformations was this summer, really eating right and getting in the weight room um, a lot. Uh, and that's really kind of one of the reasons why his game's taken off uh, this summer um, is because of his dedication to the physical side of it, in, including the recovery side. Like that's, there's so many different steps as you mature as an athlete. And one of the ones that, that very few players start to get when they're young, it doesn't really start to enter their life until they get injured or they get older and they're just more in pain. But like the recovery side matters too. And so even just thinking about that, like, hey, hydration for tomorrow's game starts right now. Like I've got to start rolling out and stretching right now so I can still be bouncy on our back to back. Um, you know, like that, that stuff eating right, you know, refusing that dessert and having a salad, like that type of stuff is very rare for a 16, 17 year old to start to get. 
Um, and it's, it's players like, you know, LeBron who started to popularize it or even Kareem with the yoga side of things. Uh, that's how you have long careers. Um, and then obviously just the overall skill reps too, like getting in early, getting on the gun, making sure you get 500 jumpers up before everybody else wakes up is, is one of the fastest ways to, to, to pass people um, or continue to, to raise your ceiling. Uh, I mean, probably the number one thing is just having strong relationships with the players. Uh, that matters more than anything else. Like the wins and losses come and go. Some seasons you're going to be good, some seasons you're going to be bad. But most importantly, like, hey, can, can you and your players connect and have a good time playing the sport and learning about life playing the sport? That's the most important part. Uh, hopefully having a positive impact on them during that time. Uh, you know, it's one of the things that I love about education is, you know, as uh, our guys go off to life, like seeing them later. The first day I was here, you had the snowman tie on. Yeah. I knew, I knew. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, you know, you know. Well, so I, because I got a plethora of ties. We don't wear suits like we used to. Yeah, uh, we used to wear them a lot more. So actually, my, I only wear it on, on championship day, okay? So I have one tie, only busted on championships. Um, and it was a gift to me from Bob Punter, who was my head coach. Um, and uh, we actually got it for him as uh, a class when we were players and he gifted it to me. And so that's the one that like we only wear it. I only wear it on, on a day where we can win a championship. And so that's the one I, I always, it's always sitting right there. And when I open up all the ties I got and everything, usually it's gonna be something green, but that one just sits there. And I look forward to hopefully having a chance to, to be able to wear it. Cause that means we're gonna win. We're, you know, we're striving for a, a sectional championship or something else. Well, usually our games are on school days, so go to school, come home, try to get a little nap in, and then wake up, eat. Uh, I'll probably get like a little PBJ and a turkey sandwich in. Uh, maybe a protein shake, depending on how I'm feeling, but I'll usually drink one of those in the morning. And I'll head to the school, yeah.
Oh, he's a good player. I mean, obviously the game plan was to stop him, keep him under his average, and I think we did that. And um, I mean, he's still at 20, I think, but still it's six points under his average. So, and coming out, uh, them face guard me, just, I mean, Al was 6'8", he was dominating the paint. So just feeding him the ball and him scoring 18 points against, I mean, 5'10", 6 foot, I mean, that helped us a lot. And like second half again, that's when they kind of had to start guarding him and that's when I got a couple more of my open looks and started making shots. What's your go-to like, move? Uh, I'll probably go to a mid-range pull-up first and then I hit, hit a couple of those. If I'm feeling hot, I'll go to a step back three, see if one of those go in and uh, might have to hit a hezzy pull once, time, once in a while, see if one of those go in. Our problem is this year we start off a little slow. We start off slow in the first quarter. Uh, they came out and they were up by 15 at halftime. So we just knew like, coming into the game, I mean that was a big game. They were undefeated, so winning that game would have been huge. But um, I mean being down 15 at half, we had to come out because that'd look bad if we got blown out so uh, and then we were actually down 15 going into the fourth quarter too so going into that fourth quarter we kind of picked up the pressure started throwing a little uh, one through one in there and then that's I mean I was like I just started taking over that at that point So now they're up three, we have the ball, we have a chance to tie it, and we're running a, a side out of bounds play for me, and we throw it away. So I don't even get a shot up, but um, I mean, stuff happens. I mean, it was, it is what it is, but. Lake Central just lost, so actually Maryville was undefeated in the conference. So going to that game, if we won that game, we'd be first in the conference. So that was just our main goal was coming out hot, not coming off to a 15-0 deficit. So coming to that game, just starting off hot and knowing it's going to be a, going to be a hostile environment. And I mean, they came out. They was helping a lot off. They was helping a lot off our other guys. You know focusing their attention to me and that's when, I mean, our uh, Notre Dame baseball commit got hot and I just kept feeding him. He hit seven threes that game and um, it just opened up things because they couldn't help off of him no more and that's kind of, I just got my open looks off of that too since I wasn't getting double or triple anymore and we ended up winning that game by 17, I think, yeah.
second. My dad never really, my dad never really thought I could dunk in game in high school. I got a couple in AAU, and there's not a lot of defense being played. But uh, he didn't think I could get one in high school, so just proving him wrong felt good. And I missed a couple last year, my sophomore year, and I got the steal, and I was on a fast break, and I went up and I was up there and I just dunked, and I guess I was, I was hyped, so I just pulled up, <laughs> pulled up on the rim a little bit, and then. Uh, I think there was a timeout, and then my coach came over and said, the ref said, don't pull up on the rim again, or else it's going to be a tech, so I didn't do that again. Then you had another dunk. I did have another dunk, yeah. I'm trying to, uh, if I get a fast break, I want a windmill in game. That's, that's one of my goals. And then uh, I want to catch, catch a body. So if I catch someone lacking under the rim, I'm going to have to go for it. And if they get dunked on, they get dunked on. But I will dunk. I will dunk on someone this year. So someone's gonna be watching this, and I will dunk on someone watching this. So. If it's love, I want everything. Touch my soul, touch my heart. Don't judge my mental. They told me that life is simple. Been real since Papa Pimple. I started out in the rental, so now that the presidential speak once and listen.